Hey, this is Class Creatives. You've probably seen tons of videos on YouTube trending about how the most popular movies and characters were made with zero dollars or in 10 to 100 times less the amount of time studios took to create the assets and they are racking up millions of views and angering professional artists on devaluing the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears spent on creating art and animation that has never been seen before as they pave the way with timeless characters, unforgettable cinematic movie history moments, and aiming to create the most revolutionary movements in 3D production. So how is it that these artists can create the same characters and sequences that cost hundreds of millions of dollars and tens of thousands of hours to make? and drastically less time with virtually no budget. Let's dive into the specifics of what separates professional workflows and production that cost millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of hours versus the process of recreating shots and characters quickly, oftentimes by one single artist. There's been some really great discussions online about artists recreating visual effects shots and 3D animated characters in one hour versus 100, or for zero dollars instead of millions. How they recreated iconic characters in free software single-handedly in Blender, and we wanted to also shed some light on these viral trending videos and some of the misconceptions that come along with them. Firstly, we do not in any way want to discredit the amazing talent of anyone who can recreate visual effects shots or animated characters themselves. These are some truly amazing talented artists recreating the trending franchise material shown in the breakdowns and their workflows that inspire and motivate artists who want to learn how to recreate their favorite characters and movie sequences. There are a number of factors as to why many of the reasons why recreating art can take 10 to 100 times less time to create versus a real production asset, whether it be a video game, TV show, or feature film. Pre-production and concept art takes an enormous amount of time and talent to not only to create unique designs, but to capture the director's vision, and of course to appease the executives who will be funding the project to make the material potentially safe for marketing. Keeping characters and assets on brand often limits fresh new ideas and artists and directors being able to bring new styles of art to the screen. Production times also matter, and designs have to be considered so that deadlines and company goals can be met which also directly impact design choices and adds to the turnaround time for the art to be created. Once the designs are approved, that doesn't mean that changes won't be made, and this can add to additional budget costs and production times. Directors often change their minds during production about what may seem like small details that add millions of dollars and thousands of additional hours to implement changes that were not previously built into the production timelines. A huge contributing factor that is also hidden from the untrained eye is that even when final assets are created and production is moving along, directors and leads can request changes down to the pixel, also known as pixel f***ing, or a note to tweak a tenth of a frame's animated movement, known as frame f***ing. It's not uncommon for a director to request changes to a motion blur of a distant shadow or a slight finger change that has to be adjusted in the graph editor because the precision of the mouse cannot even move the pixel precisely enough for what the director is zooming in on. Performance changes are also huge culprits to production delays and costs going up. Tweaking a simple head shake could take hours and tons of retakes before it's finally approved, something that arguably will go unnoticed to most gamers or audiences Yet this is the high level of standards professionals need to adhere to when it comes to AAA games and creating the best movies and animations in the industry. When simply copying something that has already been perfected in tens of thousands of hours of not only design but lighting, texturing, acting, posing, and movement, it will take far less time to recreate the painstaking process that is hidden behind the polished final render that is seen in cinematics, game animations, visual effects shots, and 3D animation performances by the best studios and artists in the world. Also, the concept of redoing something is always faster. If you've ever experienced software crashing and you had to rebuild what you just did, it's always faster to redo something and oftentimes the redo's results can be better than the original first pass. The hardest and most strenuous aspect of the creation is the process itself. And these trending recreation videos play on that exact concept. The additional time to find the perfect pose, the perfect silhouette, lighting, or color gives a huge advantage to the time and cost factors making these trending workflows seem incredible compared to the professionals who are doing all of the heavy lifting during the R&D process behind the perfect renders we see in the final products. So even though a recreation with an interesting idea like a character swap could still take hundreds of hours and weeks to recreate by a single talented artist, having a starting point with the final animation performances 
and character concepts already done are always going to be a huge advantage versus starting from scratch. A great example of how long creating a brand new look and style can take is the pre-production art test that would become the entire look and feel of the Spider-Verse. A brand new style was being attempted that nobody had ever seen before. The test took the talent of hundreds of artists and months of work for a very brief animation test trying to capture the essence of a revolutionary game-changing look to 3D animation. Art is very subjective, and if an artist is able to create the art for themselves outside of production and without several artists, leads, supervisors, directors, executives, and a marketing team involved, it's much faster and simpler to call something final and move on to the next piece. A fun discussion we saw online was about the use of AI in the controversial Coca-Cola ad where mistakes and artifacts were included that would never have flown in real productions by professional artists. Showcasing and highlighting the extreme attention to detail production studios need to adhere to for a shot to be deemed final. It's also not uncommon for budgets to spend thousands to millions of dollars on unused footage. Sometimes fully rendered and final shots are cut adding to production costs and artist man hours adding to production times. Not all YouTubers who create in Blender do it for the clicks and quick payouts. Decoded shared online that he was one of the first to do this trend with his top video amassing an incredible 16 million views. He shared that he likes to recreate the works of movie scenes as a master study, like if he were an illustrator replicating classical paintings to see how close he could get to an iconic scene on his own with limited time and budget. He understands the precision and production talents necessary to create the shot from scratch in a real production environment. But these exercises allow him to push his skills while also helping other artists that want to learn techniques to create big IP based sequences that might not have detailed teardowns to follow while learning how the assets could be made by an aspiring artist on their own by themselves. These types of videos are also partially why there is so much information available online for Blender and the growing community of talented artists creating independent art for themselves outside of the traditional 3D studios with much more complex pipelines and massive budget requirements. We also have taken this recreation process approach in some of our lectures and videos to demonstrate workflows when time and research are limited and so that students can learn how iconic shots are created and how they can use those shots as reference to inject their own personal style and take on a classic cinematic shot or character. Even the pros themselves do this in movies, TV shows, and games. Another misconception about time and money when it comes to these types of videos and workflows is that with professional industry final shots, the core essence of what separates a good from a great artist is their ability to polish a final shot or asset. Getting the final 10% polish, taking the art from good to amazing can sometimes take just as long if not longer than the 90% of time needed to create the shot or asset from scratch. This 10% polish is what artists strive for to separate them from their peers and it's the X factor that audiences don't come to realize is what makes the animation performance, render, or design have that special element that's so tough to put a finger on that they feel subconsciously. Again, this adds to cost and turnaround time, which oftentimes is missing in these quick workflow style videos. There is also a big difference in production cost and time if the asset is used by a single artist for a pre-rendered YouTube video lecture demo versus a real production asset used by a team of artists to integrate into a visual effects movie that has several other limitations around other 3D characters, assets, and effects, or even if the asset will be used in gameplay and game cinematics. These factors contribute significantly to production time, costs, and talent beyond just the final render of the asset which these videos do not have to adhere to in their costs or time spent on the creation. Building assets that are utilized for a whole team and production environments adds a ton of complexity that goes unseen to the untrained eye, making these claim feats seem incredible to an untrained artist who has not had to spend the countless hours ensuring assets run efficiently in a professional environment setting. We hope this video gives some perspective on how recreating shots can be done in significantly less time, virtually no budget, and looks strikingly similar to the material that was copied. When it comes to recreating art, whether it be a painting, a piece of music, a 3D asset, or even video gameplay, what goes on behind the scenes is really what adds to the production costs and insane amount of hours necessary to create original art that has never been done previously. Add on the cost of software, R&D, tools for hundreds of thousands of artists working together, professional voice actors, mocap artists, top Hollywood acting talent, legendary directors, 
and you have a recipe for budgets and timelines that will decimate what it takes to recreate something that has been finaled and perfected already. So the next time you see a recreation, try to keep in mind what goes on behind the scenes on what it takes to create a masterpiece, and even how it can apply to your own art when it comes to redoing or improving something that was done before. Are you recreating some of the most iconic 3D assets for your own personal development or as a working industry professional? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect.